Hello, Recapped Mystery here. Today, I'm going to explain a comedy, crime, drama film, Hustlers. Watch out and take care. Destiny, a new employee at a nightclub, prepares for her first shift. Destiny gets her first client just as Justice, a co-worker, takes the stage. But things don't go as well as she expected because the girls already have their regulars. She struggles to persuade them since she lacks the necessary skills. She returns home to live with her grandma after paying the casino the majority of her profits as a charge. She gets up at 3 p.m. to prepare for her shift. Before leaving, Destiny learns that her grandma has sold her necklace, so she gives her some money, to which the elderly lady answers with appreciative words. When Destiny arrives at the club, she is captivated by Ramona's main stage performance. When Ramona passes Destiny, she asks, doesn't money make you aroused? Destiny joins the star on the rooftop after the show and requests a light. They end up having a cordial conversation. The novice admits to not having enough abilities and performing poorly on her initial days. Ramona consoles her and offers that they mentor Destiny, show her some of her movements, and even collaborate. Fast forward to 2014, and we see a different Destiny who is being interviewed for an article. When the journalist asks, when did things get out of control, Destiny responds that Ramona was always in charge. Back in 2004, before the customers arrive, Ramona instructs Destiny how to pole dance. Destiny is once again awestruck by Ramona's superb moves. She gives it a shot with the support of her lovely mentor. Diamond walks in as they are both gathering their breath and giggling. Ramona introduces her to Destiny and suggests she teach the newcomer how to lap dance properly. Back in the changing room, the girls are speaking about the assumptions people have about strippers and how their real lives differ from the persona they present at the club. Destiny recalls Ramona's teaching about the three tiers of Wall Street boys. The bottom feeders who don't undertake illegal jobs don't have much money, but the girls can get around it if they do. The people in the center get their hands a little soiled but don't go too far. Finally, there are those at the top. They enter through the back door, get private rooms, and spend a lot of money, like $10-$15,000 per night. There were no cameras and they could do whatever they pleased without fear of repercussions. Working with Ramona helped Destiny develop and earn more money. They also strengthened their friendship. Destiny, or Dorothy as her grandmother refers to her, indulges in some exquisite shopping. Ramona invites her over and shows her her swimsuit design idea. Swimona, the future label, was introduced. Juliet, Ramona's daughter, is introduced. Later that night, Ramona and Dorothy had a deep conversation about their future ambitions and aims. We are then returned to the interview, where Dorothy inquires how much of her narrative will be included in the piece. She doesn't want to provide a negative impression of strippers and propagate the stigma, since she was merely trying to make a life at the time. Destiny is back to her stripper days, earning money, obtaining her own house, caring for her grandmother, and even returning to school. She was learning at the counter when a man named Steven approached her and complimented her handwriting. Using her charm, she tells him it's probably because she doesn't have a computer. Later, she's studying on her new laptop in the girls' locker room. According to Dorothy, 2007 was the best year. She ran into Johnny, her boyfriend, with whom she had been battling regularly. She was making more money than the people on Wall Street. She even bought her first automobile. Dorothy recalls Usher walking in on the last amazing night. On the stage, everyone was dancing. Then there was 2008. It was the worst financial crisis in decades. It's not the finest moment to get pregnant, but Johnny promises to look after her. Dorothy has a daughter, Lily, two and a half years later. After a final disagreement, the enraged mother kicked Johnny out, leaving her alone with her daughter and no employment. She attempted to contact Stephen. The tech person who had promised her a computer back in the day. But it turns out he now has his own family. So she struck out the final ex-client on her list who is no longer of assistance. Dorothy attempts unsuccessfully to get work in retail. She becomes caught in the vicious cycle of we want employees with experience. But we can't give you that experience. As a result, she is compelled to return to the club, which has undergone significant changes. Her pals have all left 
and the new girls are unpleasant, the club is nearly empty. Even the housewife ended up working in customer service. Customers don't want to spend money, so the new females do things they shouldn't do to acquire the money. Destiny is put in a predicament where she must comply with a financial request. She is embarrassed with herself, especially after discovering that she has been duped. The client did not pay her the agreed upon sum. Devastated, Destiny exits the champagne suite and returns to the club, where she runs across Ramona, a long lost closest friend. Over a cup of coffee, the two friends catch up, and Ramona informs Dorothy about her activities since the crisis began. The club was not the same after the financial catastrophe. Mercedes found Ramona work in a store. She is coping with her own problems because her fiancé tilled a copyright, Dragon, has been detained and she cannot afford a lawyer. Ramona's job at the store wasn't going so well, so she went back to the club, but that wasn't going so well either, so she devised a plan. Look for possible customers, make them intoxicated, take them to a nightclub, push their credit cards as far as they can to get a portion of their club expenditure, however, their prey were not always so cooperative. Some were even swept up in their scheme and ended up losing money. That's when Ramona decided to give her idea a push. Rather than merely waiting for their targets to become inebriated, they would spice their drinks. Ketamine causes individuals to forget their memories, while MDMA causes them to be cheerful and have a wonderful time. So her scheme worked, and the money continued rolling in. Ramona encouraged Desperate Destiny to join her team by the end of her story. She joins them on their next business venture. Gary was the one who prayed. Ramona spices the cocktail while he is distracted, and they arrive at the club. Gary, barely aware, grabs his wallet, and Ramona swipes his gold card. The strategy worked. To be safe, they decided to tweak their recipe after a large party. The second one out of the oven was excellent after the initial cook put them out cold. They decided to call some old pals instead of fishing for strangers. It didn't take them long to catch them. It worked almost too well because every day was a new trip to the club. Ramona moved. Destiny paid for her grandmother's house. Mercedes hired a lawyer for her fiancé tilde copyright, and Annabelle is enjoying her new flat with her cat. They even opted to outsource and grow their personnel. They showed the new girls how to play their game. Hustling became their way of life. They gathered at Ramona's house around Christmas time, along with Juliet, Ramona's girl. Destiny's grandmother, and Lily. Everyone was celebrating and exchanging gifts, which was extremely nice. Returning to the original 2014 interview, Dorothy is now the one asking the questions. She inquires about Elizabeth's financial situation as a child in order to explain their conduct because they were in a horrible situation. Dorothy wants to end the interview because she doesn't want to be dragged into a scenario that will cause her to disparage the girls whom she considers her sisters. Just then, Elizabeth informed her that Ramona had said the same thing the day before. Dorothy is taken aback. She obviously harbors a vendetta against Ramona. She chooses to continue the interview. 2013. Everything was going swimmingly until Ramona's greed took over. She decided she no longer needed the club and would see their clients at hotels instead. Despite Dorothy's misgivings, a new girl, Dawn, joins the crew. The redhead was irresponsible, careless, and a drug addict. When Mercedes is with one of Ramona's clients, an event occurs. The drugged man believes he can leap into the pool from the first level, but he falls to the ground. They try to contact Ramona while driving him to the hospital, but she is busy bailing out Dawn. When Destiny returns home, she discovers that her grandmother has died. Ramona attends the burial and consoles her. She also invites her to a gig that night to distract her mind and earn some money. Dorothy informs Elizabeth that she initially imagined there would be some type of goal, and that once she reached it, she would stop and start over. The interviewer then inquired as to whether this was the case with Doug. Dorothy denies knowing anyone with that name and accuses Ramona of lying. Elizabeth delves more into what Ramona stated regarding Dorothy. Dorothy's motivation was primarily to make friends rather than exact revenge. Her mother abandoned her at her grandmother's house and fled. This made life difficult for her. She turned off the recording device and showed Elizabeth off when Elizabeth asked what transpired between Ramona and her. When Elizabeth returns home, she receives a phone call from Dorothy, 
who begins giving her the story. Ramona met Doug years ago when he was having family problems and a buddy took him to the club to help him feel better. Destiny had a deep conversation with him, but Ramona saw him as just another target. As a result of the females maxing out his company's credit card, he was sacked. Doug called Destiny and asked for his money back because he couldn't pay his mortgage. When Ramona notices Destiny's compassion, she wrestles her down and grabs the phone. Hanging up, Doug filed a police report because he had audio recordings from Don, who spilled the bins while drunk. Don was asked to participate in a sting operation by wearing a wire. Dorothy thought something was amiss, and when she told Ramona in the car, she merely said she was neurotic. Police had no leads because none of the victims wanted to confess because they were embarrassed. There was an item in the media about an architect who had piled up a $135,000 bill after four nights of pleasure he couldn't even remember. Yes, he returned three times more. As a result, the females were taken to the police. Ramona, as she withdraws the money, Mercedes, on her way to see her fiancé in prison, Dorothy at home and Annabelle at her flat. Dorothy agreed to the police bargain in order to provide a better future for her daughter, Lily. Months later, pregnant Elizabeth receives a call from Dorothy, who inquires about Ramona and what she genuinely said about her. Ramona's protege breaks down when she learns that her mentor keeps her picture on her as one of the most important items she carries with her at all times. Ramona never said anything bad about Dorothy and was always by her side. Elizabeth advises her to give her a call. In exchange for no jail time, Destiny pled guilty to grand larceny and attempted violence. Ramona received a five-year probation sentence. Mercedes and Annabelle were sentenced to four months in jail and five years probation. Ramona concludes the film with a touching analogy. The entire country is a nightclub, with some people tossing money and others dancing. Everyone is working hard. Please subscribe, to assist the channel, turn on notification and leave a like. Thank you for taking the time to watch. See you again soon.